Shalom friends. Hey, uh, in this little talk that I've been doing about spiritual growth, growth in our lives as we grow in worship and we worship as we grow, uh, in speaking of, I want to speak a little bit more about the holy place or place of holiness, and which is the place of Hasidut, uh, the, one of those steps of growth. With the steps of growth, you know, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, uh, Add to your faith, aretes, which means manning up, knowledge. Knowledge brings you tabernacle-wise to the gate. And I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about going to tabernacle. There's a difference. And that brings you to the gate. Add, add to your knowledge self-control. You enter the court. You begin learning uh, how to control yourself. Literally, how in the Hebrew text, how to uh, control or actually do away with your ego or the evil inclination, the shame of it. And uh, you add to self-control, um, add to self-control <laughs> on into further growth there. It's a very difficult time once you have learned self-control and you add to that um, patient endurance, sovlenut. And we talked uh, about that in some length. But uh, that all propels us into holiness, into the life of Hasidut, which comes from the Hebrew word Hesed, which is the word that is applied in the New Testament. The Hebrew word under Haris, Hesed, is not quite like the grace that we tend to think, you know, a little bit more flowery, the way we think of it sometimes, or in the past we have, you know. Uh, the kind of grace that we think of is the other Hebrew word, hain, which is an extraordinarily important word, yes. Gives us the beginning point, but we kind of tend to stay at the beginning. So we, we want to talk about growth, and I want to talk a little bit more in the holy place about discernment. And particularly why I feel that we have maybe done, done ourselves a disfavor, um, even trained ourselves wrongly concerning discernment. Uh, the word, the, the, the verb that is behind the, the Greek of discernment within the New Testament is krino. Uh, krino means to judge. It is used throughout the New Testament as uh, the word for judging, but it otherwise, anacrino, um, diacrino, and so forth, those words are matters of discernment, of being discriminating, of being distinguishing, distinguishing matters of various kinds. And that's what it means to judge, to be able to, uh, to see into things, to see into things clearly enough to discern, to uh, distinguish. Uh, there is one judge, and that's spoken of many times. The word krino is plenty of times used for God as the ultimate judge. But where I think we've done ourselves a disfavor is Matthew 7, verse 1 through 5, 1 through 4, so somewhere in there, uh, beginning with, Judge not lest you be judged. Now that is a warning. He goes on to say, for the, the way, the judgment that you used, or the judgment that you measure will be measured upon you. Now, when we have come into holiness and we have grown to a point, and I also spoke of holiness as where we really begin to take on some maturity. If I am in a position of maturity and I hear the rabbi warning, uh, be careful how you judge. Don't, don't judge lest you be judged. Because in the measure that you judge, meaning that yes, you're going to, in the measure that you judge will be measured upon you. When I hear him say that, I will take that as, yes, an encouragement to, to judge rightly. And he goes on to say, here's how you judge rightly. rightly. First, take the, the log out of your own eye so that you may deal with the splinter in somebody else's eye. Somebody else's eye is clouded because of a, a splinter in their eye. Because of that, they cannot see clearly to discern rightly. And here we are needing to take the log out of our eye. We certainly can see so that we may help that person actually judge rightly, discern correctly toward that person in order to help them. And he goes on there to say, do not give your, your pearls to swine and so forth. Is he then saying that we should not call people swine, you know. So he's not talking about 
being mean and nasty or, or saying things that are uncomfortable. He's talking about discerning and judging correctly. There is a mature and correct way to judge or to discern. The, the words are the same there. To discern and to judge are the same word, crino, crino, anacrino, diacrino, and so forth. So I feel that we've done ourselves a disfavor by reading that passage, um, well, out of its context, really, and not understanding what is really being said there, so that we we cast ourselves in a position of never wanting to ever do that terrible thing of being discerning. So perhaps it is that we, yes, need to pray for the gift of discernment. Yes, you can treat it as a gift because we need to know how to discern, how to judge rightly as the Lord Himself does, to judge in the mature way that He does. And that is where I believe that the American church in particular, and uh, yes, even more so in parts of Europe, are at now. We, we have to discern what's really going on, and we have to discern carefully, know when to speak, know when not to speak, know when to do and not to do, know the difference, yes, between clean and unclean, holy and, and profane and so forth. But, uh, you know, there, I've been asked this a lot of times concerning, I mean, this is just simply an example. There are millions of examples, but this is one that is prevalent today, and so I've been asked about it. What about all these times when somebody speaks of all the times in the Bible where it says you shall, you know, love the foreigner, do this and that for the foreigner, and accept the foreigner, you were once foreigners in Egypt, and so forth. There are four different words for foreigner. There are four different words in King James is translated, I believe, as stranger. There are four Hebrew words, not one. You say, well, Ron, what does it matter? It's all the same in English. No. <laughs> English is a translation. The Bible is not written in English. English. English is a newcomer. The four different Hebrew words each have four different meanings, and they're not the same. They're not even synonyms. Ger the convert, that's translated foreigner, ger means convert, that is the person, most often it will say the foreigner living with you. A ger is one who is part of you, he is doing stuff with you, he has taken everything in support of you, and you support him back. That is the word that is uh, the good foreigner, you know, he's not a foreigner anymore. He is part and parcel of you. There is a word that is translated foreigner or stranger in King James that is the worst word, and that is zer. Zer is against you. He'd soon kill you as look at you. You can't trust him. Don't, when you see that word and, you know, look up in the text, go ahead and use your strongs or whatever you have to look the word up. If you see the word zer, understand that that is not good. You can even see in context that that is not good. So, no, we are not to accept just any foreigner. Be distinguishing. Be discerning. Be able to judge in a mature way that is judge rightly. And there are in-between words there. Not care is a word that means questionable. I'm not sure about this person. He needs to be vetted a bit more and that sort of thing. Uh, what's going on right now is not a whole lot of vetting at all, if any. But nonetheless, that's kind of what I mean when I want to kind of tag on into our discussion about uh, the holy place, a place of holiness. Discernment is part and parcel of holiness. And remember, according to Exodus chapter 8, verse 33, in the text of that verse, the high priesthood was filled with God's Spirit there in the holy place for one week. First and foremost of holiness is you are filled with God's Spirit. And he, His Spirit is who gives you the ability to discern properly, to discern, to judge properly, to judge rightly in accordance with the Word of God. So, again, I feel, I'm repeating myself, but I feel certainly that the church, the American church, American Christianity, and even more so, uh, parts of Europe need to come back again. We've slid back down to the gate. We're at the gate of the tabernacle. We need to come back again into holiness, come back again into 
understanding what it means to discern or distinguish correctly, that is to judge krino, to judge correctly, okay, to judge rightly and maturely, being filled with his spirit so he can do so, okay. It is pertinent, it is, it is highly necessary right now in our days that we do that, recognizing anywhere from our local congregations to abroad. Thank you and shalom. And thank you for allowing me to kind of catch up on that for my sake and yours.